You find yourself sitting comfortably behind your steering wheel, driving down the M1. Your business trip was successful, and you feel all warm inside knowing that you, and only you, could have bought the deal in. The radio plays some innocuous tunes that remind you of someone you can't quite recall. Passing through the East Midlands, you notice, coming up on your left, Junction 27B. You have driven this stretch on the motorway countless times before, and have never consciously noticed Junction 27B before. Casually, you indicate to your left and gradually accelerate as you slide onto the slip road. You briefly smile as you read the sign, Gallatry, five miles, home of the International Space and Knitwear Center. You now know in the back of your mind that you have less than five miles to turn around, less than five miles to abandon your whimsy. The radio crackles, and you are listening to Gallatry Community Radio FM. Today's question, who is Jimmy Dove? suddenly in panic, wondering where you are, and smell the sweet fragrance of jasmine off the Bosphorus, hearing the morning call to prayer. You, my friend, may be in Istanbul. If you wake and find yourself in the middle lane of the M1, wondering whether you can remember to drive or not, this also might be considered normal. But if you awake and you have the sensation that you are nailed to the floor in a dimly lit warehouse, then you, pilgrim, are in gallantry again. We are Jimmy Dove. Never forget who we are. Don't remember who you ever were. You are Jimmy Dove too. We can all be Jimmy Dove. We are. Remember this. We are and we will be. Jimmy Dove is great. We are great. Jimmy Dove is. An incident involving a member of the catering team in the Avery restaurant who made an unsuccessful attempt to jump from the fifth floor balcony. The emergency services arrived shortly afterwards and our colleague has since voluntarily gone to hospital. This is Gallatry 102.54 FM. Analogue. Welcome friends, free citizens, florists, guest workers and those who are tolerated. We know who you are. It is a day for celebration here in Gallatry. It has been almost two years since we had the honour of becoming the first experimental, fully devolved town in the country. We now flourish as an autonomous, tax-raising, multicultural, locally-focused, pioneering community. The Council Executive congratulates all of those who stayed on even after the initial expulsions. Your tax dollars are much appreciated since the central funding has now come to an end. The end we all hope for, the end that is now. Outside the executive chamber, the mayor, Ms Lorna X, reflected on the historic news today. We have reached a momentous point in our history. We are now free to govern ourselves without the shackles of central government interference. Any interference. Remember this. No meddling. What we say goes. What we say is law. This is what you voted for and now it's time to pay. And we will all pay. Well, most of us. Some of us. We aim to fully exploit the political capital that we have been promising for the past two years. We are now beginning my policy offensive in earnest. It's time for Gallatry to roll up its sleeves and build our Jerusalem, or Babylon, if you voted with a preference. We asked the Mayor whether she had any concerns regarding the transition, to which Miss X replied. There are only three things that can stop Gallatry's progress. Asking pointless questions, tax avoidance, and asking pointless questions. Thank you. Oh, by the way, 
Inherited life tax is now in force. Borrow those empty days that your ancestors wasted drooling. Pay with credit and extend your own party days. Just pray the youngsters don't want what you have. I'm sure we all echo that sentiment. Talking of echoing sentiment, the bridge that once occupied the site of the fall of Dick has now been moved to the new celebratory parkway of Centenary Park. Celebrating a century of celebrating a century of celebration. The echoes, or some may say moans, serve to encourage park goers in realising that there is more to life than just a party. The only party that counts is ours. You would do well to remember this, citizen. No other party exists, ever. The mayor told us to say that. But we wanted to anyway, because we report on the truth. We are the truth. And that would never be a lie. In other news, a woollen hat has been found up a tree in Gallatry Park. The woollen head garment, which was red and had a bobble, was discovered on Tuesday by Dead End Lane resident Sharon Bramance, aged 43. Buxom Sharon has reported saying, I could hardly believe my eyes when I saw it up there. I got it down with a stick and put it on a fence post. The owner has now until December the 31st to reclaim the hat after which it will be destroyed. The fence will be preserved and an imitation hat will be placed in the original hat's position as a reminder to the careless owner of what has been lost. Vigilance was rewarded and Ms. Bramance received a fence of her own that prevents her from leaving. Snooping will not be tolerated. Recycling will be rewarded, always and repeatedly. To recycle is to repeat. To repeat is to recycle the endless wheel that only we can stop, as Ms. Bramance has discovered in a rather more listless moments. And now, in new news, creepy news, news that puts you on the edge and makes you look over your shoulder. Police Chief Anderson warned Gallatry residents of a worrying increase in identity theft. He iterated his warning on the steps of the police HQ. We all know about the perennial problems of thought gleaning. We are now seeing an alarming increase of identity theft. Mine was actually misplaced and was discovered some weeks later concealed in a woolen hat in a tree. However, we are getting more reports of people complaining of meeting strangers or humming a personal, familiar tune that has sentimental value known only to the victim or strangers exalting the benefits of a specific pair of comfortable trousers that the victim knows that they, and they alone, once owned, named affectionately as Mr Bumbley's Pants. The chief continued. This problem is thought to be getting worse due to the common use of personal smartphone technology, which is trackable, whereby the thieves can steal your thoughts or hopes in public places. However, the full identity thief requires a more invasive procedure. We are getting a handful of cases of people waking up inexplicably nailed to floors of disused industrial premises, wondering why or how they got there. All I can say is be careful. Keep your personal thoughts, hopes and secrets in a safe place, such as the council repository for unguarded ideas. We're offering a bounty for the good ones at the moment, So please contact your local neighbourhood watch officer or council transformer for more information. He winked, adding, a bonus is a bonus. He also said, anyone concerned that they have had their identity stolen should make a special note of the status of their citizenship papers, as we cannot promise to honour any past privileges if you are no longer essentially you. You may have inadvertently become a less valuable, more needy and problem citizen. Our advice is to think, ask yourself constantly, who am I and what do I do for the community? If you are unable to answer this question coherently, you are either asleep, comatose or working for the council's cleansing department and have turned the brain wipes on yourself. Take the antidote now and remember that your ideas no longer count towards anything. Your musings are naught, your views are no longer currency. Kindly take them elsewhere and dispose of them carefully and with consideration. 
Your cooperation in this is duly disregarded. Hallelujah to that! Sage advice from Chief Anderson. So that's why the judge awarded them with a cadaver in his pyjamas. As part of our multiculturalism series, we have decided to have a rerun of the very popular Choose a New Flavour of Crisps week. Although this time we have given it a twist and are calling it Sponsor a God Week. We all know that without prayers, less popular gods lose vital life force and simply wither away into a distant memory of an ex-deity. They then gain employment in local government and are entitled to cast votes magically on any whim that the clergy can throw at us. This is not beneficial to democracy and the status quo that is required to maintain the way forward for forward-thinking status quo as like we have in power now. And tomorrow? And tomorrow. And perhaps a little bit beyond even further still. Our loyal listeners have suggested four candidates that are down on their luck and could do with a good praying to. As usual, simply pick the deity that most appeals to your sense of morality or fits in with your busy lifestyle and give it a pray to every night for a week. The winning god will be greatly fortified with omnipotence, even after a week due to the fantastic airtime possibility of obtaining praise from a large listener base like we have here in Gallatry. But it doesn't end there. If you have picked the winner, you get the right to persecute those who pick differently and should gain some personal satisfaction that yours is a more popular god than theirs and hence you are more personally, more pious, morally vindicated and dare I say it, just cooler than the rest. Right, eyes down, here we go. 1. Sparto, the Abyssinian god of the Habisha people in the shape of a Colobus monkey. 2. Tornquist, Nordic god of wood and shipbuilding who goes in the shape of a large box. 3. Voluptua, the domestic goddess, symbolised by plentiful food and fertility. 4. Snork, the elephant god of children and music. So, good luck. Results this time next week. And remember, the Pay to Pray hotline set up by this station. A community service. Thank you, Eustace. We have had an update from the Department of the Cultural Research Centre at the Council regarding the recent spate of identity thefts in this town. We are not sure who filed the report. The signature at the bottom is rather smudged and appears to be in two colours of ballpoint. Or it might be a rollerball pen. Still, it's indecipherable. But here it is. It appears that certain stolen identities are being resold on the black market for many times their original value, as certain identities are deemed more valuable. As most of your identities are actually deemed as monotonous, dreary nothingness with no value at all, but then your identity might actually be your own. At first this was the benefit of the original thief, but now people are actively seeking out more attractive, higher status, better adjusted, better looking identities in order to replace their own. This is wholly understandable and to be condoned in certain quarters, such as foreigners seeking to equip themselves with the working knowledge of the parasite nation that they have recently joined. Miss Donna Penny from the department explains, It seems that people don't like their own identity and seeking out more attractive ones instead. The issue now is that everybody seems to be going for the sanely highly desired identity and we are seeing a populace-wide ubiquity event trending at the moment. It appears that everyone wants to be Jimmy Dove, even women and animals. The really worrying thing though, Donna continued, is that no one knows who Jimmy Dove is. No one knows him. We could be sleepwalking into a real undermining of our town's identity from an unknown foreign influence. This is the greatest threat to this community since the zombie influx of the 90s. Donna frowned and looked into the middle distance forlornly, apparently recalling her zombie relatives who are now in their 90s and securely entombed in the Gallatry Zombie Rest Home and Garden Centre, located in the northeastern extremes of the Gallatry Cemetery and Crematoria. We asked Chief Anderson for a comment, but his office said that he was busy looking for a hat. We will keep you posted of any future developments. Dear listener, I too am wondering who this mystery man is, and asked by the power of broadcast media. If you know the answer to this question, please call in. It could be of great benefit to us all. Who is Jimmy Dove? 
Well, I've been manning the phone for hours. Switchboard jammed. I estimate that over 5,000 of you have called in. It seems that every caller was keen to tell me that they are Jimmy Dove. Everyone seems to have a very pleasing, engaging telephone demeanour and are charming as well as coming across as witty, available, rich and sexy. What is going on? Has everyone in this town bought the Jimmy Dove identity? It is now 7pm in Central Gallatry. Well, the results of the Sponsor of God Week have come in overwhelmingly early and in great prodigy. Although there was an early spurt by Sparto, we have a clear winner. And I do think Sparto benefited from being first in the list. The new deity is, and judging by the response, a new organised religion to boot, all hail the mighty Snork. Really? Snork? Fellow Galatarians, a brightly coloured musical elephant. I'm not prone to criticising my dear listeners, but what are you thinking of? We do know what you think. That makes it even more alarming that you're willing to make your thoughts so public, as if anyone was really interested. Well, it's now 2am, and I've been manning the phones for hours, and after that, the barricades of the radio station all night. Please don't kill me, dear listeners. I love Snork. I love Snork. I love you, Jimmy Dove. Please don't kill me, Jimmy's. I am Jimmy Dove. I love myself. Thanks, Snork. All hail the mighty Snork. I have been pulling in favours until the early hours, evil listeners. Chief Anderson and his crack team have cleared the radio station of Jimmy Doves and are held safely at bay, but for how long I just can't imagine now. What is this all about? What have we done to deserve this, these death threats and all? But as I watch, I can see a large green elephant, Goliath-like, rising from the car park. Thronged by several thousand ardent worshippers waving pitchforks and broomstick handles with carving knives tied to the end, chanting, We are the collective Jimmy Dove. Love you, Snork. Kill the unbeliever. Kill the unbeliever. Like we were promised, although I didn't actually read the disclaimer carefully. I've had enough of this. Time to take some action. Well, According to the Observer Radio Presenter Manual that I have dusted down from the old vinyl vault, I need to evoke the business continuity plan in the event of vengeful deities and associated death mob, which is surprisingly close to the front of the tone, just behind section 2.11, interviewing the dead tastefully, and just in front of section 2.2.3, what to do in the event of haunted headphones. What does it say here? Okay. I need the seven inch single canister marked bananas that is down in the vault. I shall return soon. Well, evil listeners, I've just opened the canister. It contains an envelope and an old seven inch single. Let's see what the message is. Very interesting. <coughs> Fellow Galatriarians, I know who the real Jimmy Dove is. Please stand down your pitchfork, stroke broom handles with knives tied to the end, and lend me your ears. The real Jimmy Dove is an American actor who played a character called Snorky, or Snork, in a popular 60s children's show, The Banana Splits. He was dropped from the show after the first series and since has been hoping for a comeback to return to the heady days he paraded around in a green furry man suit, falling over with the rest of the zany children's animal band. He was indeed a hero to many children back then, but he is not a god. You have all been sucked into his plot to take over Gallatry. You foolishly bought his sexy identity and then you made him a god in his own Babylon. Now he wants to smite us. Snorky is not a god. We repeat this warning. Snorky is not a god. He is an ageing American actor with plans to take over this town. And dear listener, as I speak, the great elephant lurches back on its hind legs, trumpeting wildly as it thrashes out to the crowd, flailing hundreds in its wake, left and right. That's one prickly and pissed off pachyderm, people. The stampeding horror ensues, dear listeners, but I have a plan. Now, if I can just play this disc via the roof speakers, that should break the beast's control of the crowd. The joke's on you, Snoggy.
As dawn breaks, we again have quiet around the radio station. The giant snork stroke Jimmy Dove is dead. The crowd of Jimmy Doves has dispersed, and I am renewing my subscription to the Observer Radio Presenter Business Continuity Planning Association as we speak. That's one hell of a manual. Dear listeners, on reflection, this is really a simple morality play, if all said and done. As the blessed Jeff Goldblum would maintain, man became actor, actor became elephant, men became actor, men destroy themselves, actor becomes God, men become God, men work out that actor is God, men work out that God stroke man is an elephant, angry crowd kill elephant, lynch mob kill actor, God is dead. Long live the power of rational thought, for that's the gallantry way. All Jimmy Doves have, by their own volition, have become identityless. 4,000 people without identities, low citizen grading zombies who are easily bent to the civic stroke secular will. Ms. Lorna X will be pleased. She looks down from high in the council chamber, a tear in her eye. She watches gallantry tarring and feathering rational thought for looking at them funny. Welcome to gallantry, again and again. The echoes under the centenary bridge are getting louder and louder. They whisper loudly and repetitively. We are Jimmy Crow with a new Jimmy Dove. We are the way. Who Jimmy Crow is is not known at this juncture. Welcome to Gallantry, Jimmy Crow, whoever you are. You have been listening to Gallatry, a community-funded local radio station. I'm Adam Aardvark. Max couldn't be around at the end of the show. He often needs to lie down in a darkened room and sort of, well, convalesce. If you enjoyed today's show and want to know more or simply express a simple and not very cogent opinion, then email us at welcometogallatry at gmail.com. You can tell us what you think, although we might already know what you think. Or failing that, if you genuinely have no idea, we can helpfully provide some new ideas that you can call your very own. Ideas that you can share with your friends and family and become a much more interesting and likeable person, if only to yourself. This has been a Gallatry Entertainment broadcast recorded in a haunted pub in Gallatry. No, honestly, voices appeared on the recordings that we later had to edit out. I think we got them all, but who's to know for sure? Anyway, Gallatry is performed by Max Black, written and recorded by Max Black and Adam Aardvark. His copyright, Gallatry Productions 2015. Thanks for listening. But remember, on your next journey home, Gallatry may be just around the corner. <laughs>